Hi, Cliff. How's it going? I'm good, thank you. How are you, Jeremy? I am excellent. Uh, we are we are having a great time here at .NET Conf this morning. Morning for me in New York. Um, I know you have a lot to cover, um, yeah. so we're going to be talking about remote computer science and PyTop .NET and Teams. No, that's not me. Uh, wrong session. <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, anyway. I was like, this is not correct, actually. Here we go. We're actually going to be talking about 3D printed bionic hand um, with IoT and Xamarin. Um, yeah. So perfect timing. I'll let you take it away. Excellent. Hi, everyone. And uh, thanks, Jamie and uh, Jeff behind the scenes. Um, my name is Clifford Ages. I'm going to talk to you about how I've gone about building a 3D bionic hand uh, for a, a friend's son. Um, there you go, my slides will, will move on. Um, a bit about me first. Um, my day job is that of an airline pilot for a major UK airline. So my office is the uh, the picture you can see there. I'm flying tomorrow um, on a long haul flight to the US. Um, when I'm not flying planes though, I'm a freelance .NET, Xamarin and IoT developer. So I love playing with electronics. I love building things and tinkering with uh, Xamarin and mobile apps and spending time with family and stuff like that. I'll come back to why I mentioned the fact that I'm an airline pilot uh, a little bit later in the talk. But let's meet Caden. Now, Caden's a happy-go-lucky uh, teenager. Uh, as you can see there in images, he's very active in the, uh, in the Scouts community uh, in the UK uh, and goes to jamborees around the world as well every year. Um, but those of you who are more observant can probably see in the picture there that Caden's missing his, uh, most of his left arm. He's missing his left forearm, left hand. And on his right hand, he's missing all of his middle fingers. So he's just got his pinky and his thumb. Now, you know, Caden is uh, is uh, provided by the NHS, the National Health Service here in the UK. So our, our medical teams and hospitals here in the UK is provided with a prosthetic arm. Um, he's been uh, part of a team um, that's been studying this, and he was provided one pretty much from birth, from about six months old. Uh, and he's grown up with wearing a prosthetic arm. But a lot of children don't get that privilege, don't get that chance, um, because these are expensive devices. Um, even these dumb ones that you can see here, which are literally just a, 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 a claw which opens and closes. Uh, as you can see here, if I was to pull on the, um, on the, the, the this is literally fishing line, it opens and closes the, the grip. Um, now, as you can see there, Caden's got this um, and his party trick is to do that when he's on the London Underground. He's off to the London 2012 Olympics there. But you can see the fishing line um, just coming off the arm. It goes across the back of his shoulders to a pad. On his other shoulder and as he moves that shoulder back and forth it pulls on the uh, on the fishing line and uh, it pulls open the claw and then there's elastic bands that pull it closed when he relaxes his shoulder every year Caden has to go back to the hospital every year they take a cast of his arm uh, of the stump that he has and uh, they make that into a, a mold which they then use to create uh, his next new arm and in typical um, kind of uh, mum's kind of way of saying things um, but don't worry, you'll grow into it. They make it slightly too big, and after a couple of months, he grows into it and it fits. And just when it starts becoming tight, it goes back to the hospital and repeats the process. This process costs the NHS uh, in the region of four and a half to six thousand pounds every time. So they're not cheap. It takes a couple of days of Caden's time and his family going back and forth to the hospital. Um, so this is uh, a picture of a uh, prosthetic arm um, that was issued uh, after the First World War. Uh, and you can see here, the design doesn't change much. It's pretty much the same. It was a leather strap back then rather than a fishing line. Um, and it just moved the, the, the forearm back and forth. But this one is 100 years old. This is a picture in the Imperial War Museum in London. I took uh, a few months ago when I was there visiting. So you can see here, the design hasn't moved on. Now we can do better than this. But let's see how good Caden is with his prosthetic arm. Here he's making me a cup of tea. Um, us Brits, we love a cup of tea. Um, so this is uh, me recording him making a cup of tea. So you can see he's quite dexterous. You can see the strap goes across his back and his shoulders uh, when he moves in a moment. You can see the strap there. And he's quite dexterous and pick up a tea bag. He can pull it apart with his, his finger and, uh, and pinky. And you can see that he can make me a cup of tea. Now Caden's been, uh, as I say, wearing one of these for, for, for a number of years. But we wanted to do better. So we searched the internet. Now, we start off with uh, Google, Bing, et cetera, and we search around. And the first thing we come across on the NHS was linked to the Limbless Association. Now, I've been giving this talk uh, and been working on this project for a, a couple of years now. And the Limbless Association is still under, under development. So I think that developer needs to be, uh, needs to be uh, given the, the hurry up or get a new developer in, I think. 
But um, what we come across was the uh, Team Unlimited. Now, this was because um, there's a story on the national news um, in the UK about a dad that 3D printed his daughter an arm. And that's where this whole idea come from. Um, so we, we found Team Unlimited. We printed one of their arms, not the Isabella. It was a slightly older version. Um, so I started this about two years ago now. Um, and that version we gave to Caden. He tried it on and he was OK, but he, he felt we didn't give him any more than uh, his hook that he had currently because the fingers clasped, but it didn't do anything else. It just basically he still had to move his shoulder. He still did the same job. So he wasn't very keen on it. So, you know, as a pilot, we're giving feedback and we take that feedback open and honest and we don't sort of take it as negative. It's like, OK, right, that's where I need to improve on. So we went back to the drawing board, back to the Internet and I stumbled across the open hand project. This was a, a university project um, by Joel Gibbard, and uh, he built a uh, electromechanical hand, uh, again, 3D printed. It's quite bulky, it's quite beefy, the control wasn't very good. Um, the 3D printing was a bit, as you can see, a bit edgy and bulky. Um, but you can see there, he's starting to, to look into um, uh, prosthetics and the fact that biomechanical prosthetics cost upwards of $100,000. Joel then went on with others and created Open Bionics, which is a wonderful team uh, based out of Bristol where they produce these arms and they sell them around the world. Um, initially, Open Bionics was a uh, open uh, platform and they, they uh, produced or, or showed their designs on, uh, on uh, GitHub and we all know and love GitHub. But because they were trying to get these sold into the likes of National Health Service in the UK and sold into markets in the US and Germany and France and places, for obvious reasons, they had to close the design because um, they couldn't have designs coming in and changing um, for the fact that they needed to get it uh, quality marks and quality assured, etc. So they closed the design. But there's enough of a design there and they put enough online for us to uh, to move on. So we go back to the slides. I downloaded the Brunel parts off the off of GitHub, fired up the 3D printer and printed off all the parts there. You can see all the parts in white and red on, the, on the, uh, my cut map there are all 3D printed. Um, you can see the bags of uh, screws and springs and dowels and things. Um, they're purchased off the internet. And you can see the, the four Actronics motors in the uh, top left corner of the map there. So now we've got all the parts. We need to work out how to connect it to Caden. So we needed to take his mould that he gets from the from the NHS. It's one of these. And we need to work out how to make the uh, the um, the arm fit to Caden, how he's going to connect to Caden. So you can see there, it's printed along. And you can see in the... Um, in the uh, uh, timer here there's five hours and 45 minutes left uh, of printing um so i went off the bed as i normally do when i'm sending 3d prints and come down in the morning to find the, the spaghetti's mess um the left hand image you can see um the the uh, socket had popped off the print bed uh, and it failed to adhere correctly and it popped off and it printed the left of the mess but the middle image uh it was enough printed for us to try um so we went around popped over to caden and uh, see his family had a cup of tea and we tried it on and this one in uh uh, in uh, in the nursery rhyme style, this one didn't fit. It was too small. So we printed another one. You can see in the right hand picture that was too big. So we printed the third one. The third one was just right, and it fitted like a glove. Um, to the point where Caden actually said it fitted better than the NHS one. Now this 3D print, it does take a few hours. It's about eight nine hour print um, to to uh, to get one to print, but it costs eighty pence in PLA plastic. Um, eighty pence of plastic was what a dollar. Uh, in plastic so that's pretty darn cheap um when Caden grows out of it as uh, he does every kind of six to nine months rather than having to spend days coming out of the hospital and waiting weeks for a new one to be made we just click print following day he comes around after school and picks up the new one screws it into the hand and he's off again um and it costs us 80 pence so you know that is kind of where we're going with 3d printing technology these days so we look at the prices of all these 3d printed parts now you can see the top there is the the molds that we use to uh, to to put thin grips on we're going to the next slide you can see the black elements there are the uh are the the urethane molds and the reason is because the plastic that we print with is quite hard it's like lego plastic and it's quite slippy so you can't grip things so we mold urethane rubber onto the end which is the same sort of thing like neoprene and stuff that you make uh, swimsuits out of so we mould that on and we use those moulds. I've used those moulds to make about 15, 16 hands now and on the same mould. So that is a one-off cost of 10, 10 pounds, $12. Um, the actual interesting parts are the bits at the bottom image um, that we need to make. You can see at the bottom there, without the moulds, they cost five pounds sterling or $7 to make all the parts make the hand. You add on the 80 pence or another dollar for the, the socket 
and about a dollar fifty a pound to make the uh, the central part of the arm, which is different for every person. So obviously, where their arm uh, stops is different for every uh, every child and adult. So you're talking less than ten dollars. We've got all of the printed parts, all of the three D printed parts. So already we're we're, we're beating um, the what is provided by the NHS many times over. So you can see here, this is the handy moving. He's okay with it, and uh, and um, and uh, uh, you can see that it moving around. That works by you can see the strings just pulling on the the fingers, um, and as the string is literally a uh, fishing line, Brady fishing line that pulls. So we're back to the fishing theme. Um, it pulls via the motors and it, it pulls the fingers in and when it releases the springs pull them back out again. How do we control it though? Well, Open Bionics, when they originally released this design online, uh, they had the chestnut board. They had at the time when we started this project a store where you could buy the components that you needed. Um, and the chestnut board always seemed to be out of stock. Um, it was quite expensive. It was £250 plus VAT, which is our sales tax here in the UK and posters and packaging. So it's it quite expensive board. Uh, but at the end of the day, it was just an Arduino uh, SAMD microprocessor and you know nothing much else. So it was expensive and difficult to get hold of. So it kind of you know wasn't ideal. Had they sensed the, uh, to control the board though, but they used these malware sensors. And these malware sensors, as you can see in the image there, they used the little sticky pads. So if you ever have an ECG with your doctor, they're little sticky pads that stick onto you um, all over your body. Um, to, to measure the uh, electrical signals your body's sending around. So these pads um, uh, stick onto these boards. The boards stick onto the muscles. And if we look at um, where they stick, you need to stick them quite centrally uh, on the muscle group um, to get a very good signal. So you can see the green signal there, the correct placement. If you stick it off place, like um, slightly higher, slightly too low, you don't get too much of a signal from it. So you need to make sure you put this in the correct place. Now, we could do that, but if you imagine giving this to a child, those balls are 35 to 40 pounds, so, you know, 40 to 50 dollars. Um, you need two of those. The pads, um, you know, a, a pack of pads to, to last you a month is, you know, five to seven dollars. Um, so, you know, they need to be changed every day because obviously they lose their stickiness. You know, the child has got these expensive balls stuck to them. It's not ideal. It, it can break um, quite easily. So how does that malware sensor board work? Well, if you all grab your arm and put it up, straight up, and you put your fingers either side, just above your elbow, and if you do the close, which is where you pull your hand towards you, you'll feel the muscle at the back go tight. If you open out the other way, you feel the muscle at the front go tight. If you hold your hand straight up and you create a fist, you'll feel both muscles go tight. So all we do is we have open, close, change grip and change grip goes to the next grip in the grip sequence. Fairly simple uh, measurement. Now I have realized um, that uh, we could use that and come on to a different way later of how we uh, measure those signals. That means that in the open bionics codes that they load into uh, the Arduino board that they produced and um, they've created five grips, which is better than what Caden had. He had just one grip open and close and he can just pick things up. But now he's got a, a palm grip, so he's got, he can hold a, a bag so he can help mum and dad with shopping. He didn't like that grip. He can have a point gesture, so he can point this over there to his friends. He can have an okay gesture to say okay. Um, but he wanted more. He was like, well, this is great, but I want one to hold my Xbox controller cliff. Okay, we'll put that on the uh, on the issues list and we'll come back to that later. Um, but how does it work internally in the code? Now, if we look at this uh, array here, this is a, a, a 3D array uh, that's held inside the, the code base. So if we want to add a new grip, we have to go into the code, so we have to fire up um, uh, VS Code, we have to go in and edit the code, we then have to connect the board, so we have to take the hand apart, connect it to the, the, the PC and load up the code. But you can see here, it's, you know, for us as software engineers, we can work out what this does. But how about Caden, parents, the doctors and nurses, the technicians at the hospital? We don't really want them editing code because you know they can make a mistake and cause damage to the, the mechanics of the hands. But also, it's quite complex for them. They're not trained software engineers like we are. So again, I was ticking that up as a, as a mental issue to come back to and try and fix later. So drawbacks we talked about, we've got a single source supply of a board that's often out of stock. The muscles, um, also those muscle sensors, as the muscle grows in strength because Caden's been using it, we need to get a dual screwdriver and change the little potentiometers on the board to change the, um, the, the gain values that are coming out, um, which again, isn't ideal. Um, the grip sequence, if he misses the grip sequence, it goes around that uh, array, 
Um, he's then got to remember, OK, I've missed the point one. So now it'll go four grips again to get to the next one. And then it'll be the point one, which is the one I actually won. It wasn't ideal. Um, it maybe he wants a different set of grips when he's at school from when he's at home. He doesn't want the Xbox controller grip when he's at school. So um, we're talking that as the drawbacks. He wants to try and fix and push back into the open binary project. So how do we fix the first one, the controller? I use these Adafruit feather boards uh, in a lot of projects I do with IoT for clients. Um, the Adafruit system's fantastic, based out of New York. Um, and this uh, feather board system they have, um, they're all the same form factor and they just have different areas. You can see the bottom right there, the red board. Uh, that is a Bluetooth uh, sensor. You can get one with Wi-Fi. You can get one with uh, 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 Lorian, which is a radio frequency. You can get one with GPS. They come at all different sizes, but the actual pin out and form factor is identical. So I got a few of these. I got them from Amazon just to prove the point you can get them anywhere. They were delivered the next day for less than £20, less than $20. Um, next day, the person was knocking on my door and delivering one of these. So they're fantastic. Like built-in battery charger, LiPo battery charger. So lots of things to chalk up. It's like, these are brilliant. Let's go with one of these. So we built one of those. We added on the uh, Adafruit also make a uh, motor controller board. You can see that the, the other board that's there on the uh, on the image. And uh, we used that to control the motors. Initial problem was the fact that the motor, the cable, the flat ribbon cable that comes from the motor is a, a flat ribbon. And we got through holes. So we need to find a special connector. We managed to find one of those and, uh, and sold that into the circuit. So that's how it working. Now we need to load the software. Now, Anyone that's used Arduino knows and loves the Arduino IDE. It's it's effectively Notepad-esque IDE. It's not very good uh, as an IDE. It's not as full featured as VS Code and Visual Studio, the weird software developers know and love. It's more of a hobbyist IDE. VS Code is really good for programming Arduino, but uh, it uses the Arduino uh, IDE under the hood, and you can't debug still. With Visual Studio, we know and love uh, F5 and F9 uh, for debugging and, and, and making breakpoints. And if you use this Visual Micro add-in for Visual Studio in the uh, in the store, um, you can add in and control and uh, burn your code down to your boards. But also, you get debugging back, so it's awesome. I can't highly recommend this enough uh, as an add-in for Visual Studio if you're going to do any IoT development. So now let's get on to the muscle sensors. I was flying along, I remember it quite um, vividly. I was off to Japan, I was somewhere over Russia and I take magazines with me to read uh, in the cruise um, when the autopilot's engaged. Uh, you know, we often have something to read, a Kindle or a magazine and you know, we'll read a bit of an article and look up and make sure we're managing the aircraft correctly. Um, and we also make sure that someone's flying the plane and the other person can relax for 10 to 15 minutes. And there was an article about Arduino debugging and we noticed this sensor in the uh, in the bottom here which is a uh not drawn that very well but a piezoelectric sensor um which basically is using in tiles it's using uh in uh in um uh, explosive uh, demolition and basically it measures a uh, uh, an import so if you uh, hit it or bang it it gives you a small voltage out which you can measure as a uh, 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 signal into your arduino board i was intrigued so i got to japan all of a bunch of these and for less than a pound i had 10 of them on my door the following day waiting for me when I got home. But we tried it and Caden wasn't happy because he couldn't stop the hand mid-flow like he could before with the malware sensors. Okay, we'll go and look for something else. So then we come across these four sensitive resistors. Now these, uh, as you apply pressure, um, they give you a different resistance. So you send a voltage for it and you get a different voltage out. You can measure that. Excellent, now we've got four sensitive. These are six pounds for a pack of two. So rather than the 35 pound each, uh, um, for the MyWare sensor, we're now down to six pounds for a pack of two. We could stick those quite happily inside the uh, inside that three D printed um, socket that sl um, uh, Caden slides his arm into, and now we can measure because the muscle goes tense, it pushes against that hard Lego type plastic, and we can measure the signal coming out. Awesome! So now we solved that problem. So drawbacks then, single source supply from the board, often that's not Adafruit uh, and the, 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 the de derivatives of lots of other companies are copying their design now. So we're quite safe in the fact that it's not going to go anywhere we get from Amazon. The muscle sensors, well, we've replaced those with these uh, full sensor resistors. Again, I bought them from Amazon just to prove a point and there's many manufacturers of these all different shapes and sizes. So that's good. So now we're down to the grip sequences. Miss it, you go around, you want to make your own grip. Okay, well, what can we do about that? Well, I said earlier that I'm a mobile developer and I love Xamarin. So I thought to myself, well, I've got this board that's got Bluetooth on board. I can write a Xamarin app and the Xamarin app can uh, access the Bluetooth stack. So I can write this app that access, 
and sends data to and from the uh, Arduino board. It's in the back of the hand. And I can write an app about it. So I was like, this is excellent. So this is what we work with. So just a little bit about Xamarin, Xamarin Forms, just in case you haven't seen any of the other fantastic talks by uh, Maddie Legier and David Ortnow uh, and others um, on .NET Config. Not go back and watch them. But very quickly, you got two versions of, of Xamarin, you got the digital one where you build your own uh, UI layer and it's all C-sharp backends, or the one that I'm now leaning towards in favor is Xamarin Forms because it's moved on leaps and bounds. It's no longer really the forms bit should disappear. It's no longer just for that business layer form. And some amazing apps have been developed um, using Xamarin Forms. And the shared UI, so I write the UI layer in XAML or in code and it will share and look um, the, as it needs to look on each of the different platforms. So that's what I did. So if we uh, bring across um, the, the, the Handy app, so this is my um, my phone sitting in front of me. Here's Handy, so we can see Handy here. So if we open the app, you can see it takes a few seconds to, uh, to boot up, and we open up. It says connect first, so if we connect that, and we plug the battery in and start scanning, we can see Handy appears in the Bluetooth. It's now connected. So now we've got Handy connected, and if I go across to, run quick enough and go across to the um, UART control, you can see the fact that the two are communicating in the background over UART, and this is used for advanced features uh, on uh, Caden and his family's version of this hand of the app. They don't have this functionality. Um, it's just for me as a debugging. But if we go back to the grip selector, I can now push the big button and close the hands. I can open the hands. I can move to a different grip in the grip sequence, and I can I can add them to my favourites. So I can put them onto my favourites and add them into the list. I can go to the grip order. Maybe Caden wants his hand, his grips in a slightly different order. So he can change the grip order, save it down to the hand. So now when he goes around the grip sequence, it's a completely different grip. It's gonna remove the, the battery for the moment. That whining, if you can hear it over the speaker, is because I've got two dogs. And when I'm testing, if I leave it running for too long, they start getting upset at the uh, the high pitched voice uh, sound. So I've tuned it down so it's out of their audible range in hours. Um, and they're not so upset and they don't go barking at me. Um, but the other thing is, we can do a grip builder. So we can make our own grips and save them to the hand, um, which is fantastic. He can now make his Xbox grip and add it to his sequence. The other things we can do is we can go into the settings. We can change the settings of the hand, if it's a left or right hand. We can change the hold and, and pick threshold, which is settings in the hand for that timer that runs around. And also, uh, we can change the, the way the muscles and that work. So this is the sort of thing that technicians and the doctors and nurses would need to change the hospital. Also, we can do a muscle sensor check. So every week or two, Caden runs into this, he starts it and he runs through uh, uh, what we tell him to do, which is open and close his hands and try and get these bars, uh, these two bars here, that one there and that one there, try to get them to the top and hold them for a second or two and release them again. We then send that data for processing, it goes up to an Azure function, it gets put in blob storage, and we're collecting that data. We've been doing this for a number of months now. And at some point in the future, we're going to get some um, some machine learning to reason over that data and then change the values that are in the those um, dwell times that were in the settings to save him having to go in and change it himself. So we come back to the uh, slide deck. Caden's now got his Xbox grip. He's over the moon. He just needs the new latest Xbox um, uh, and not the old one. He's, he's waiting to get one here in the UK. Um, Santa's not too far away, um, but we've got an Xbox grip where that trigger finger just twitches. So as he twitches his muscle, he can twitch that in and out. So he doesn't need to completely open and close his arm, but it just moves that, that trigger finger. And that's fantastic. He's over the moon. He can now play his Xbox um, without needing the adaptive controller that uh, Microsoft produced. So now let's look at the cost then. So all the parts, the 3D printed parts, as we said earlier, um, come to 10 to 15 pounds, everything, that's the moulds, everything. But all the other parts we need to purchase and buy um, literally um, arrive and they cost just over 500 pounds. Um, so what, $680. So the National Health Service is spending four and a half to 6,000 for a, you know, a fiberglass arm without the hook, I might add, because that's, uh, that's a few thousand more. Um, the hook is interchangeable when he gets that move to the next arm as he moves along um, and grows. Um, so just the fiberglass part um, that's made. Um, I'm managing to make this for, you know, just over 500 pounds. Obviously, there's none of my time in there and the software and, and the bits and bobs behind. This is just pure mechanical parts and the software. But 
you know, I've written a software, it's on GitHub, it's open source for anyone to go and download and play with that works on the Adafruit board, not on the, the um, Chestnut board, but on Bionics. And the, the, I'm um, planning to open source the, um, well, the uh, app as well, uh, as uh, we get it to a point where it's uh, usable for all. But the app and everything else, it's, you know, it's, it's there and it's super cheap. So what's next then? Well, I want to finish off building a mobile app out. I, the version that's on my GitHub at the moment um, that's open source isn't the version that's on uh, um, Kay and his parents' uh, phones, uh, purely because there's some personal information in there that we don't want to share on uh, GitHub. And uh, we want to be very careful about what we're, we're sharing here on the data we're collecting and how we're collecting it. Um, so once we've got it to a point where we're happy, we'll desensitize the, the app and then push it up to GitHub again. Um, in the open source version. We want to get machine learning um, to reason over that data and send the data back to the app um, so that when he arrives home from school and he turns his phone on, the app gets the, uh, the new push data and he connects his arm and it'll connect up. We'd like to go full.net, um, which I'll come on to in a sec. But um, also we're moving on to uh, prosthetic legs. We've realized that actually this 3D printing stuff is quite cheap and we want to fix the problems with, uh, with legs as well. And that's because uh, uh, my uncle, uh, recently had to have a leg amputated uh, for medical reasons and he would like to replace the leg that he has which is pretty much a stump um, and uh, yeah we'd like to fix that as well for him. So moving on to full.net not sure if you've seen it but uh, you've got the Meadow uh, Micro F7 board which is the same form factor the, of the, of the feather board um, but it runs full.net in a mono runtime. These are slightly more expensive, about twice the price, but it's .NET, uh, which means we can do a lot more machine learning on the board rather than in the cloud. Um, so that's bringing IoT direct to the edge. Um, so that is absolutely fantastic. And I do have one here, and we're, we're trying to get the, the software to work on there and control the motors um, and get it working. So why did I mention being a pilot? I just said at the very beginning, the idea behind this project, quite soon after we was doing this, and I started giving talks, people were very interested, and people around the world were very interested as well. So what I want to do is put a 3D printer, I was hoping to do it this summer, but obviously uh, COVID has stopped that, but put a 3D printer and some parts into a box and a, a couple of spools of filament, take it somewhere around the world where they don't have the wonderful NHS or health services that you know Europe and, and America uh, tends to have. Um, take it somewhere, go to a hospital, drop it off, show them how to use the kit, and then pop back a month later and see how they're getting on and be on the phone or, or team or Skype call later on to help them out so that they can give back to the local community because they may not have four to six thousand uh, dollars to produce these arms uh, for, for children locally whereas we can produce it you know much better device for much less money if you want to jump in um, you can find me on github uh, it's github slash cliff ages and you'll find all the andy handy um uh, parts in there you can jump in and uh, and help out um that's it thanks for joining uh, i just want to say a massive thank you to caden he's been fantastic with the feedback he loves his army loves playing his xbox to caden's family as well um that, that test out the app as well they get a push from app center every time i uh, push it uh, to github they get a uh, a new app update from app center they love it they give me feedback on whatsapp or via app center um, and also massive thanks to all the behind the scenes people here at uh, .NET Conf um, that are helping out um, that I don't think get enough praise. So thank you, everyone. Thanks a lot. Amazing. Holy cow. That was phenomenal. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Cliff. And thank you, Caden, and your family. It looks like you're doing well, and we're so happy for you. Um, we're a bit right at time, um, and we didn't collect any questions for this session. Um, okay. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, it means you answered everyone's questions without without fail. Well, um, they me, they can reach reach out to me on uh, on uh, on Twitter, so they can find me there. Perfect. So everybody, please go and do that. Ask all of your amazing IoT questions um, to Cliff. Thank you, Cliff, for joining us. We really appreciate you, and we'll we'll look for you soon. Bye now. Take care.